The programs you're about to see are not only free and open source, they are powerful and will allow you to create professional art and games. Here is the list in short. My game engine of choice that supports both 2D and 3D game creation is Godot. For 2D art and graphic design, I mainly use Krita and Inkscape. I edit these videos and do 3D with Blender. I program in various languages, write and plan projects using Emacs with the Doom distribution. I started making music with MuseScore and Ardor recently. The latter is also a good tool for sound design. And to automate many tasks and work faster on my computer, I use the Fish Shell and Alacrity. Finally, as you often ask me, I'm working on Linux Pop OS with the GNOME desktop environment. Let's start with Godot. Godot is a 2D and 3D game engine with a complete editor. It started out as an in-house game engine and it was open sourced five years ago. It's a general purpose engine, so it works for all kinds of game projects. It's really powerful and mature when it comes to 2D. I like the 3D side of it, I think it's easy compared to some other engines, but the 3D editor and some features are a bit rough around the edges. The developers are making a new 3D rendering engine and taking it up to the next level with Godot 4. If you want to learn more, I made a video dedicated to it. Godot explained in 5 minutes, you can watch it after this one. Krita is a professional digital painting program. It is great if you want to make paintings, drawings, traditional animations, or game graphics. Its painting tools feel great. I think it's an excellent program for animators, for people who want to do comic books, illustrators, concept artists, and so yeah, also game artists. Its layer management system is really good. It has non-destructive features like the ability to add layer effects, filter layers, or to reference other Krita documents, which is perfect for client work or when working with a team. We also made Krita Batch Exporter a free add-on to export assets to your game. Inkscape is a vector drawing program. While Krita allows you to paint freely on documents that have a limited number of pixels, Inkscape relies on geometric shapes that can look crisp at any zoom levels. Raster drawing as in Krita and vector as in Inkscape are two complementary approaches to art. This year we saw the 1.0 update of Inkscape which was major. The program hadn't gotten a major release for years and honestly I used to not like it so much. But the latest version brought many of the features I was missing, a much welcome new interface and much better performances. Inkscape's drawing tools are great. The interface is much simpler than something like Adobe Illustrator, yet it has advanced features for professionals like its non-destructive path effects and filters. I warmly recommend Nick Saparito's channel if you want to learn it. Nick is an experienced graphic designer who worked professionally with Inkscape and GIMP for years. He makes accessible free tutorials weekly. Blender has become one of the kings of 3D art. Once regarded as a weird program, it is now used by large animation studios like Ubisoft. Blender is designed as an all-in-one package to make animated movies, but it also works well for games. It offers powerful tools for 3D modeling, sculpting and animation, and you also have an insane amount of free yet highly polished add-ons for it. We edit all our videos with Blender, which I would not necessarily recommend, but we used it for our open 3D mannequin as well and it's a pleasure to work with it. If you would like to learn Blender, there are many free tutorials out there. Now, if you want guided and professional courses, you should check out CG Cookie, this video's sponsor. They've been training Blender artists since 2008 and provide excellent series on their platform. They have complete learning paths, so you don't have to look for what to learn next. On top of the video lessons, you get support, assignment, and access to a community of artists learning Blender. I love the modeling tutorials of Ken Tramell. He's great at explaining his workflow and has a great attention to detail. With the GDQuest Cookies coupon, you will get 50% off your first three months with a monthly subscription plan. Sign up today and get started with a seven day free trial. For programming, Writing and project planning, I use Emacs. It's an extremely flexible program that feels a bit bare when you first install it. I use it with the Doom Emacs distribution. It gives it a beautiful interface and many features. What I like most about it is that Doom Emacs emulates the modal editing experience of Vim. 
Also, everything is documented inside the program, and once you know your way around it, you can find how anything works with a keyboard shortcut. The point of using a dedicated code editor is that it has many features and tools that Kodo doesn't have right now. It's also nice to be able to use the same program for many jobs. Now, I don't recommend Emacs to everyone. Uh, Visual Studio Code is another great and probably friendlier option. I use Emacs because there are specific killer features that I use a lot and that don't exist somewhere else. For example, Org Mode, the extensive toolkit to organize projects. There's also Magit that I use daily to collaborate with other developers online. For music, I use Arda, an advanced digital audio workstation with which you can make music and sound effects for games. I use Arda in conjunction with MuseScore, which is a great music notation program. To get the full version of Arda, you will have to donate $1 to get the installer on Windows, but it is Libre software. You can download it legally for free. I personally chipped in to support the developers, as I think it's a really powerful program. If you want to learn more, we made a dedicated video in collaboration with Anfa. The link is in the description. The last programs I want to talk about go together. They are Alacrity and Fish, the friendly interactive shell. They are my terminal and my shell, which I use to maximize my efficiency. Shells offer you a simple programming language to combine commands and automate repetitive tasks on the computer. You might wonder what this has to do with game development. Well, developers use these tools a lot in their workflow. For example, I made some custom commands to quickly open Godot projects or run something, or uh, when we release a new course or a game, I just type make in my shell and our build system updates everything for us. The shell that comes by default on Linux and macOS is Bash, but Fish is much more user-friendly. That's why I use it. it. Has all the features you need out of the box, like its slick auto-completion and syntax highlighting. On top of using Godot at GDQuest, we also make tutorials and free tools for it. Right now, we are on Kickstarter with the team to fund a great new course. It's called 2D Secrets. It's about all the tricks we have learned working with Godot for years, how to code all sorts of game mechanics, for instance. You can find all the details on the campaign page. If you are new to the channel, I left some links to our free tutorials and open source projects in the description below. With that, stay creative, have fun, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.